Well, 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 you're most welcome back to Gymnasium. And we are here in From the Depth for another Gimle battle. This time we are going to do the first official battle of the Gimli battles. So the battles we had before and some of the battles we'll have afterwards are unofficial battle. That means that the ships do not meet the requirements that I have posted in the well <clears throat> in the rules for building. And well, those ships are namely like older ships, ships that already exist, like the. Uh, like the Titan's line, like the Turtle Lord, like the Draconia itself. My, my Draconia. Doesn't meet the rules. But this is the first official submission we'll have under this battle. This is the Super Annihilator by Saito Shepard, who has submitted uh, several ships before. Um, you've seen his builds, and they have the distinctive. Uh, stripey design looking here. So it has a really cool distinctive style that we definitely can recognize as one of Saito's works. So here we got, uh, of course I spawned it in an adventure mood just to check it a little bit. Now uh, I require that the submissions, uh, either you submit one ship that's an official uh, battle version and one that's a parade version. Uh, so for the battle version all lights need to be turned off to mitigate lag. Uh, however, I just added a um, little block, a little ACB block to turn on all the lights for when looking at uh, uh, the ship. So I don't know, maybe my uh, strength of the lights, maybe, the, may, maybe they're a little bit too uh, strong or weak. I don't know, I just set them all to 40%. In any case, let us check this ship a little bit here. So I think we're going to do one of these left-right cutters. Just so we can check through a little bit here what's inside. So we seem to have a lot of... Uh, we got some heavy armor boxes with ammunition here. Right, we got some engines going on. This is a fuel engine build. We got some pretty big, uh, like, APS turrets. This is an APS design. We have thin turret necks here. So some people like to do thin turret necks, and we got some heavy armor. This seems to be pretty strongly armored. A lot of, uh, a lot of alloy, a lot of uh, heavy armor. It's a very uh, megalodon type of armor, I'd say. Um, it's probably a little bit more expensive armor than I would have opted for. But a lot of people like this armor, and we will see its effectiveness in combat later. We have a properly insulated EMP box here with rubber inside, that's super nice. We got a EMP insulated uh, little laser area here, I think this is lambs. So that's super nice that laser is insulated too. We also got some steam here, so I believe this steam only gets activated when it's in combat probably, because now it's shilling pretty much. And why do we have... Why? Oh, this is probably just a... Uh, oh, that's the air conditioner. I think Saito Shepard talked about that in the Discord, that uh, um, his super annihilator had an had from the depth first uh, air conditioner. <laughs> All right, we got some more <clears throat> heavy armor boxes there with ammo, so it's really spread out. Good to not have all the ammo at the same time. We got some really heavily armed areas for the uh, propellers here. You can see it's stacked up there. We got some vertical launch missiles here. Now they are standing on the base of. Surge protectors, not sure that that will help, but maybe against torpedoes. We got some heat decoys too. Well, that's good because um, good for Saito Shepard. Good that uh, the Super Annihilator has that because she will be saved by that. Uh, the Gimle is targeting hot blocks for some of, it we some of its weapons. We have some up props here, and that's of course super good because um, I ban water pumps, unfortunately. I would love to have water pumps, but if you'd missed me saying that, uh, they like too much for me, so it's not possible. Just wanted to take a little look at the cross section. 
So we have a really thin exterior layer. So this works as a super huge air gap just to catch all the spells. And then we have a checkerboard wood and metal mix armor. I would say that uh, it's probably better to uh, have layers of wood and metal, but that's up for testing more in the future. We'll do some empirical testings of that. But in any case, here you can see we have several layers of... Okay, so we have several air gaps down here. Now, I would probably move one of the heavy armor spall catchers maybe out here instead. But here we have them in the center, so it's protecting stuff in the center really much here. Okay. Interesting indeed. We have a, a pretty, pretty expensive strong uh, armor here. <clears throat> we don't have a lot of top armor, so the lambs on the super annihilator, annihilator better be good because uh, the uh, gimless mortars are coming. They're not very dangerous actually. But in any case, uh, what's really cool here, we're gonna check some... We're gonna check some of the guns here, what do we have? We have an armor-piercing high explosive down there. Alright. We can check this gun up here and see if it's the same. No, this is a Sabo. Sabo. Alright. So we have a Sabo, we have an armor-piercing. And we have another armor piercing uh, heat secondary. But this heat secondary should probably have some charges behind it because this heat secondary is pretty weak now, I believe. But in uh, any case, it's more penetrating, that's for sure. So that's that's a trade-off we'll, we'll all have to do. So we have some anti-missile missile things and that seems to be the armaments. We're really having a lot of uh, APS for this one. APS is probably the most popular. Ew, these are using the 500mm Sabo shells too, so these are probably Sivs cannons <clears throat> that probably may double as damage dealers. Uh, anyways, this ship is really cool. We got a little... Um, we got a button. We can press this button and you can see that we are now watching... Uh, I don't know, a uh, DVD of some... Uh, <clears throat> on a Pioneer system. So here we have the air conditioner on top here. And uh, yeah, then we can walk out here. We got a nice view of the outside. Uh, we can walk upstairs here for a little heat decoy. And walking out down there. There is also a ladder upwards, but it's just, it's a, it's a empty room up there. So we definitely got some interiors here. I don't know if we can get... Yes, we can get down from here. That's good. So we have more heat decoys. We actually have a lot of heat decoys. I think the um, the Draconia will... No, uh, of course, I mean the Gimle will definitely zap around some different places. We can walk on the deck outwards here. A little bit low in the water here, but well... Wasting more materials to stay higher in the water is probably not wise. Gimle uses a lot of power to stay higher in the water, just for the aesthetics, which is probably waste. But that's um, that felt important to me, so we're spending our materials on that. In any case, that is that, I believe. So let's get into the battle. There we are, inside the battle. So, best of three, let's go. And here we can see the Super Annihilator by Saito Shepard is trying to take out the cramps. Man, but it didn't. It's very equal in the materials here still, but it's only been a few seconds. Bam! Two more cramps are coming in. Oh, big detonations there. I think, I believe those cramps have a little bit too high health for the lamb systems going on there. I wonder what we're shooting at here. Okay. The laser is zapping through. The smoke is trying to defend. But the laser is zapping to different areas here. I believe it's switching hot targets after hot target. 
All right. There we got one cram getting zapped, but I do believe that that was the lower. Oh no. So the lambs and the sieves are able to take out one shell sometimes, that's for sure. Dealing a pretty high damage. But we shoot them in two and it's not using, fl using flax and it is getting through there. Right, I needed to lower the quality a little bit there. FPS was dropping. Not sure why we're getting the stuttering here. All right, we got another cramming coming there. So the super annihilator is behind when it comes to health there. How is the Gimla doing with its incoming shells here? It's trying to aim pretty high. Wonder if it tries to go for the heat decoys up in up in the top there. The lambs are able to take out some of the blasts. The Gimli is still at 99.4%. Is not looking good for the Super Annihilator right now. Not looking good at all. Alright. The Gimli is like casually. Vidi vidi vicky. By the way. It's a... Uh, do we have big penetration going on there? I think the Staggered Era may catch some of it. We definitely got penetration in here. But I believe that the APS damage type is just a little bit too low for this type of battle. We really need cramps or big missiles, something that deal a lot of damage. Alright, there we go. We get some damage from the mortars here. One big turret there is offline. Do the main gun turrets try to target incoming cram shells? I think that's a mistake. I think it's a mistake to spend materials on shooting down those crams. Yes, it's trying to target the crams. Alright, alright. So the Saito Shepard Super Annihilator tries a lot to shoot down incoming cram shells, but it's not really enough and it makes it so it's not able to deal damage. It is not quite able to deal the damage against the Gimle that it has to deal, otherwise the Gimle would just continue to deal damage. Here we can see more big explosions going on there. Another two volley, bam! Yes, I really think that having the turrets shooting at the incoming cram shells is a big mistake. Big mistake. That ruins all the chances for Saito Shepard to win this battle with the Super Annihilator. Just not possible. And smoke seems to be offline here now, so the laser just burns through. The Super Annihilator is already down to 66 percentages after two, three minutes, exactly. Right, so the first battle is definitely a win for the Gimle. We will be uh, moving into the next battle because of course this is best of three. It's always possible that the Gimle was just basically lucky. Who knows? But yeah, it's sinking. No, none of the turrets are offline, uh, online, I mean, this is uh, decided. Second battle begins now. We're gonna stay here with the Super Annihilator, just to see what happens. Oh yeah, the, the cannons are trying to target the cram shells. Not good at all. It's dealing some damage there, you can see the first volley is indeed, indeed dealing some damage. And it is able to take out one cram cannon, but not the other. So yeah, we got an exposed hole here. Right, so the lasers and the fast firing guns are trying to aim for the heat decoys probably. But they're pretty quick on taking them out too, because that laser is not, is not a joke. All right. You can see the shields are really getting activated there. Now, does this Super Annihilator have shields? It doesn't, right? 
It probably should. It probably should. It can help you to not need to care about like 30% of those cram volleys coming in there. That's that's some dangerous stuff. All right. I think we need to slow down time a little bit here. We want to check what's happening with the, with the shots here. We're gonna stalk them. This is the armor piercing high explosive. They have super cavitation. They fire underwater. Lamb strike to target them and both got taken out by Ira. Well, that's why I have Ira, by the way, um, on selected spaces, just so that the AI doesn't get one shotted. Because that <laughs> that almost happened against the rag. It almost happened. It was uh, it was not a fun day, but I'm I'm happy we still won that battle, ne nevertheless. Okay, we're at full speed here. Here we have one of my sand blasting measures. They are getting completely annihilated by the uh, <coughs> by the heavy armor there, but I do believe that the laser combined with the fast fire guns is a pretty good combo that I tried to set up. Lamps are not able to take out those mortars. They're not very scary, but nevertheless. Game lays at 99%, Sight of Shepherd Super Annihilator is at 90%. Not surprising. Shooting at those cram shells for some of the cannons is not a good idea. Ah, yeah, it's from. It it just doesn't have a chance to take out those cram cannons, man. It tries to, but it's not worth the time. So, like here, what what which shell is this? This is the Sabo ones, right? They should actually deal fair damage to the game. That the red, oh, they went straight for the turret, man. Look at that! Wow, that was that was a cool hit. Okay, we we gotta check it out. Ooh, they tried to kill the sniper. One one tried to kill the sniper turret. Yeah, it was that was a good hit. And the other one went, no, 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 that's not the sniper turret, that's the cram. Okay, seems that it didn't, neither of them got through there, so almost. Just interesting to check, the Gimla has some pretty, uh, it doesn't have very strong armor, it really tries to use the armor wisely and not have more than it needs. All right. Right. Whoops. We're gonna we're gonna fly with one of these ones. See where we hit. No hit at all. Okay. Some are just getting. And some of the cramps, by the way, they're only there for uh, tricking. Bam. We're getting some we're getting some weird stutters. I wonder if there is a hidden water pump somewhere here or something. I will admit that I didn't didn't check for it. I just assumed. I should do that. <clears throat> Next battle I'll I'll actually search up if there are any water pumps to make sure. Because we don't want stuttering unnecessarily. So why why the stutter is an issue? It's that uh, you can see it kind of stops a little bit each of the time, uh, and now I don't know if this is what's happening right now. But usually for me, uh, water and helium pumps start to lag a lot when we are having a lot of damage dealt to a ship. Then it starts to lag. So then it starts stuttering. So the stuttering isn't from the start. It starts to happen after a while. Yeah, well, these 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 cram shells just penetrate. Even though we have pretty expensive armor on the super annihilator, we can't deal with cram shells. Cram shells are no joke. 
Either you'll need to take him out and using your main guns to do that is probably not wise. It's probably not wise. Uh, having some flak... Having some flak sieves, big flak sieves, is the best medicine against cram. And the Gimli itself uses uh, a big budget of flak sieves diff guns. Uh, which isn't getting used at all in this battle, because Saito Shepard didn't bring any uh, missiles or uh, big missiles or um, crams on the Super Annihilator. She's uh, an APS an APS boat. Are these decoys? I think they are. I haven't seen them fire. Well, the Super Annihilator is down to 68 percentages. I do believe that this is conclusive uh, results. Now, the Super Annihilator, she ain't quite dead yet, but the Gimle is certainly pounding on. Doing her best to sink this foe. So. I hope, Psycho Shepherd, that some of the tips can help you improve the effectiveness of the design against the Gimle. But for the best of three, the Super Annihilator does unfortunately not scratch much of the Gimle's surface. It's still at 98%, which is pretty high there. But uh, on the other hand, the Gimle is set up to deal with. Um, armor piercing chemical shells in a very uh, effective way. So your main armament doesn't do much against the Gimle. So there we have it. There we have it. The super annihilator doesn't... Oh, it still has weapons. Never mind. It's just trying to target some of the incoming cram. So actually, some of the cram shells that the uh, Gimli uses, they're actually like decoy crams. They fire so often and they're so weak and they're just spamming. We got the power shortage. Look at that. It's sinking. It's sinking. Now it's despawning as well. Despawning and sinking. Well, there we go. Very conclusive. In any case, I would just give a huge thanks to the commissioned officers in the Army of Jim for supporting the channel every month at Patreon. Admiral Super Dave, Captain Y, Commander Jacob, Lieutenant Sasteria C2, Cray V, Powered by Greed, Tyler Ross and Vincent Veritas. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel if you want to join the Army of Jim commissioned officer um, section. Well, then you're very welcome to check the links in the description and see what's in it for you. So, uh, Saito Shepard is sinking is getting uh, penalty points on top of despawning. So there we get it. The Gimle has won this battle too. We can only say one thing. AOG Invictus. This is your host, Jim Reesman. We are signing out. Till next time.